plug is in. We're ready to rock. So I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah. And one of the best ways to cool off in the hot summers was to go to one of the many lakes that surround Salt Lake City up in the mountains. Small lakes, my parents had a little boat, motorboat, could pull skiers. And then uh, I got so into it and loved it so much that by the time I was 17 years old, I bought my first boat. It was a 1972 Lone Star. This is an aluminum hull that I sanded down, completely removed all the paint, removed the interior, repainted it, redid the interior, carpet, the whole works, and had a pretty nice little ski boat um, as a teenager in high school. And so my friends and I would go out you know, every other day to one of these lakes at that point down to Lake Powell, my favorite place on the planet. And boating, water skiing, wakeboarding, uh, surfing eventually, more recently, um, tubing, all of it, just my favorite thing to do on planet Earth. And now with my own kids, I love it all the more. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing your kids learn to do stuff. boating is that it is kind of work. I really love vacations and doing things that cause you to work a little bit, especially cause your kids to work. Um, it's not easy. You know, you've got to kind of, you got to hook up the boat, you got to get everything prepped, you got to drag it out to the lake, you got to unload it off the trailer. Um, and I'm not complaining. I love doing it. And it's, it's definitely a first world problem. But, um, you know, it takes some effort to go boating and to do all those things. Um, there's just a thousand things that you learn by being outside, outdoors, in the heat, in the water. Um, and I love everything about it. Tell me what was the best part? I don't know. Bumping off the other kids. Bumping off the other kids. What was your favorite part, Casey? Um, bumping off the other kids. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright, I'll do more of that. Alright, here we go. I think I loved boating very early. Buying my first boat at 17 because it gave me freedom. It was like this place where I could be in complete control of the atmosphere. You know, I could control the music. I could obviously control the boat, control the vibe on the boat, um, and it was just a way for me to express my sort of uh, playful, carefree nature. With four kids, there's nothing more fun than um, being on the boat. You know, you stop the boat, swim break, everyone in, uh, throwing kids around teaching them how to do all of the different sports. It takes patience, it takes uh, energy, it takes uh, bravery on their part. I love all those things about boating. It's just a good time. I mean, what's more fun than being on the water? Um, it's a great way to raise kids, you know, and, and the thing about boating is that you're kind of forced to be with the same half a dozen, maybe a dozen people for hours at a time, maybe all day. and yet the kids want to be there. Uh, they fight less. They want to jump in. They want to learn to do the things that dad can do, to surf, to wakeboard, whatever. Um, they want to one-up each other on the tubes and see who can hang on the longest. Teaches them to be tough. 
I mean, you get dragged around at you know 20 miles an hour on the whip, 30 miles an hour maybe over some waves, and these kids can take it. They can take a beating. They can they can be tough, and they learn to fall into the water and get hurt a little bit. But there's nothing like boating. There's nothing like being on the water. There's nothing as free. It feels so good. Loud music, cold drinks, cool water. Good excuse to be with your family. Impossible not to love. We got the Takeman crew. We're here live in Utah finally. We've been talking about it for a long time. It's been years. I know. I know. East Coast to West Coast connection. Covered the whole country only to get here. Their whole purpose. No. Yeah, we might not leave here. That's right. What are we doing today? What are we doing today? A little off roading, little boating, little ATV. Wish us luck, ladies. All right, Cash. You ready to rock? Yeah. You driving today? No. Maybe a little bit. A little driving. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, you could drive. Kingsley, Kingsley could drive. you want you want I Cash watch? to drive? No. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Ready, kitties? Girls having fun? No. Yeah. Why not? Top of the world, Ma! All the way up. All the way up. Have a good time? Yeah. Have a good time, Cash? Yeah. All right, Kristen. Saxonal's owner. Yes. She actually set them up herself, which I must say, I, I was, was impressed. Yeah. For I a agree. housewife of New York. <laughs> <laughs> so you so you guys are moving across the country, yes. new home. Mm -hmm. You've only seen it by pictures. Yes. But here's my favorite part about Saxonals. Yes. You know they'll fit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Totally. Doesn't matter, right? I know, but I'm like, my configuration. I'm like, do I do two and a coffee table? Or what are those things called downstairs? I've never even seen those. Are the U tables? Or which? No, 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 they're the little round thing. Oh, the squat yeah. Squat yeah. Those and are so they, cool, right? You see the table for the, you've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah, you got them, baby. We're going outdoor furniture. What do you, I mean, We're Josh, we could do two and two, or we could do a love seat and two sides. Yeah. Kind of cool too. We're gonna have options. But That's what, the beauty of it. Are you going for it? going for new covers? Yeah. yeah. No, we need, no, we need a whole other thing. I have a whole other living room oh. now. Yeah. <laughs> let's 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 see what you can do. Yeah, your first video was amazing that you guys did. Wait, you really did that together? Yeah, we really did. They did a whole stop motion. Yeah. Josh called me. He's like, dude, I didn't know it was like gonna be that serious. <laughs> It'll take you Saturday morning, but once you now you know how to do it. The first time is the hardest. Oh, getting the covers back on. Yeah. Your hands yeah. yeah. But you can wash them. Yeah, no, my mom washed them. And she goes, amazing. Oh, you have a foot sack? Yeah. Foot sack. Yeah, they're good. 
Well, I'm excited to see what you do next in your new place. And we'll have to get you some outdoor sectionals. You've seen it. Did you see them out here? So we've got the outdoor set up. We're about to have dinner out here. Those outdoor sectionals. We have some by our pool. And then we have this setup here. That setup has been outside for 13 years. Most of it I've added to it. So you tell me which ones are new and which ones are older. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's crazy. And we've moved with them three times, four times. Oh, and look, there's an outdoor coffee. I mean, a little cup holder on the right. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to come by. I'm going to come by hot. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's eat. Let's eat. And then, so wait a second. What's that? This, this, that's smaller or it's the same size? That's the smaller. That's the smaller. We actually discontinued that out there. So next year, I'm going to put this same kind of sectionals out there. But this is the same size as this. Yeah, they're exactly the same. Yeah, in fact, you can mix them. Not that you can, but you can mix them. Yeah, they're great. And you know, I've changed the covers a few times. I mean, over that many years. But I just ho I'll blow them off usually. Then I'll you can hose them off. And then, so here's here's my thing. This is my biggest thing. Because we're renting a house for only a year, mm -hmm. what's the biggest the biggest thing? This is your whole brand. Yeah. I don't know. I want to invest in something that I can keep through every house. Yeah. Well, so that's go. the whole thing. Because yeah. I don't know fit. the size and because I think we're smaller now, but hopefully I mean, yeah. we always want to go bigger. But even if you even if you have to put a few like I've always had even now I have a few pieces in the basement yeah. or the garage that I'm not using at the oh, time. Oh, okay. You can yeah. own a few. Right, and, right. You know what I mean? You just and then later we'll deploy them. Like like you commented on that double ottoman in here. Okay. This was a single ottoman, and then I just decided one day, like, let's add to it. And so I went down to the basement, you know, ordered, ordered one cover. Yeah, so I attached those two together, and you have this big pit, right? And if you had, if you had a surprise guest, so watch this, kick your feet up, you could tuck this in all the way in the corner. You could attach it. It's a bed. And that's when, that's when we have sleepovers at yeah. home. We can't sleep yet. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I fight over it. There's because it makes, it turns it into like a movie theater. So, uh, yeah. These are, I like these two. These are kind of yeah, just big throw pillows. Yeah. yeah, we make throw pillows. Super cute. But Georgia has thrown up a few times on is that, various is that sectionals. Not this set. No, that's just a, we once did do dog beds. We, we need to do them again. Time, let's go buddy, dinner time. You really don't need to worry too much. And by the way, whatever you plan, you'll probably change anyway. Once you set it up, you'll be like, oh, I don't like that. You know what I mean? Like you'll be like, oh, I, I want to add well, or change. You know, I mean, perfect. I mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, you know, we're moving into this house. Right. And what are we gonna, you know, we don't have to take measurements. Cause Josh right. is like, well, where's the couch gonna go? And I was like, well, I'm pretty sure it's gonna go here, but it doesn't matter because yeah. It doesn't matter. See, that's the thing that, like, I'm always trying to explain to people, like, in a sh in a in a showroom, is like it doesn't matter. But it's hard to say that to someone when they're about to spend five thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah. But the truth is, it doesn't matter. And like, even if you get it set up, and you're like, oh, it's a little short, so just get another piece. Yeah. But like, once you understand that, like, you own sectional, so you understand. Yeah. It like frees you to just like do it right. But yeah, these pieces that we're sitting on have been outside for some of them for thirteen years and some of them are a year too old. Yeah, we want everything we invent for the future to be reverse compatible to work with the pieces that like you bought. You don't have to replace them. Yeah. And our hope is that you'll actually add to it and grow, yeah. change it. And then as we get more choices in style, like what your mom wants or whatever, yeah. it may or may not come, but we will do more things, but it'll work with the pieces she already has. Yeah. We yeah. had this sectional that we had made, remember that stupid place in Culver City? We oh first yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my god, you guys are you ready for this? Yeah. There was, it was a sunken living room and there were two steps. Yes. So I've always wanted a U shape. Yeah. Because we didn't have the U shape, whatever. Yeah. And oh my god, it, like, the, it, like the whole end of the U wouldn't fit because of two inches. Oh, you're joking. Yeah. Wait, and you had it custom made? Right? Yeah. And then so thank God we had space because the whole upstairs was like a master suite. So like oh, I had this terrible. rogue 
half shelf and then it moved with us to New York and we ended up selling it to the doorman because it was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, again, that's it was right. like, we just have to deal with it. No matter where we went, it just was too cumbersome and it never worked. And didn't we have to have it cut off? Yeah. I think we had to have it cut off. It was like Accounts a whole... Doctor. <laughs> yeah. But that's like, the best thing about these is you, you literally like you put them in a box. Yeah. Like I think they just taped them together and put like... Um, yeah, if you would have showed them, I don't know if they put the cushions inside of them. That's what it built for. You know, like oh, the, both right. of these yeah. pack up inside. No, I don't think they did. I mean, you had movers. I mean, hello. You yeah, I guarantee that probably took up half of them. Yeah. 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 Taco shell. The taco shell. They packed the taco shell. I don't think you they guys should them. keep yeah. that. Put it like in a shadow box. should have framed it. Yeah, it. Box. <laughs> and hang it up at your next house, like to remember someone, the move. What's this half burnt taco shell? Like, remember our COVID move? Yeah. So this is one, Kristen, that like, I think it's so fascinating for people on the outside looking in to just understand the business of being an influencer. <laughs> yeah, and so like, cause we talk a lot about entrepreneurship on my blog and now like you ask any kid, like what do you want to be when you grow up? And they're yeah, like, sad. an influencer. Yeah. Well, I don't know, like yeah. maybe well, My it's... kids will say, what is, I think it was Kingsley, right? Somebody asked in her, in her uh, second grade class, what does your mommy do? And she goes, she's an Instagram model. I was like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> well, what does Kingsley's mommy do then? Well, I mean, I would say I'm a model first. Okay. Like a real model. A model slash, Influencer. and not the other way around. Influencer. I mean, I still model. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like though, to, but the business of being an influencer, what, like, tell me, I don't know, tell me what you think about it. Like, is it a good business? Is it grueling? Is it easy? Is it tough? Is it I think shoot? that I think that it's sort of like a weird, crazy way of life. I think that if it's, if it's hard and if it's grueling, then it shouldn't be. Um, yeah. I think that if you're authentic about what you're doing, it comes naturally. You know? Yeah. I will say this as a influencer husband. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. The amount of time and energy that yeah. goes into the stuff that she does. I mean, she'll be up until midnight, like, working on stuff. And it's, like, it's labor intensive. Yeah, it is crazy. It Do is you it? ever feel like, so I've always wanted, because, like, I've dabbled, you know, I did my vlog daily for a year. Yeah. It was grueling. It was grueling. But, like, and now I just do it occasionally. I And I go through these moments where I, like, I don't want to even video anything because I just feel like I just want to, I just want to hang out. I don't want to be on. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you have to be always on or do you feel like you've found a good way to manage that? I think that, I mean, I definitely, there are times where I, I feel like I have to always be on, but at the same time, I, I don't really care. You've just gotten used to it? Yeah, and I very, rare, I'm not like a big retoucher, like every now and again I'll retouch like yeah. something under the eye or whatever, but like there's these people that, oh my God, they have all these gnarly filters and I'm like, well, it I'll helps, take a- It helps to be beautiful. But you know, it's like for me, I will take a picture and I'll generally post it in, within five minutes. Yeah. I don't usually hold Just on to the content real, that long. Yeah, there. yeah. And I like to keep things in real time, which is the best part about this road trip. Yeah, I, I've, I've begun taking fewer pics in my bikini because <laughs> I just don't seem to get the likes, but. Uh, yeah, well, bikini shortages during COVID is, <laughs> it's one it's of the It's time for a bikini drop. It's one of the nation's spots. I was teasing Kristen because I was, I was like observing. I always feel weird around Josh because I, I see his wife in a bikini all the time. But, you know. <laughs> but um, I was observing how, you know, I don't think I've ever observed anybody take a bikini shot in the badlands of, <laughs> of Nebraska. Or where were you, my, Wyoming? No, South South Dakota, yeah, that was pretty awesome. And then I hit the arches too for another Yeah, the arches, I feel like, you know, you could see that, but, yeah. but the Badlands, that was just, that was awesome. Ah. So I have, a, I have quite a few friends who are influencers or pseudo-influencers, and like, I do feel like it's underestimated just how much work it can be, you know? No, definitely, because it's not just the picture, it's the content, it's writing the content, it's uploading the content. Being clever, and then you misspell something, you're like, yeah! Oh, I mean, that's the hardest thing because I've been modeling for so many years. I'll get a modeling job now and it's like, they have the art direction. They put me in the clothes. It's amazing. As opposed to somebody sending me something. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to get creative and uh, figure this out on my own. It's not easy. Yeah. Never mind the hair and makeup and everything else, yeah. which totally sounds so insane. I'm saying all this out loud in vain. But it's no, it's, no, it's fine because I just feel like every kid now want, like I want to be an influencer when I grow up, but it's a real job. I mean, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like, oh, well, you, you know, just take 
pictures of yourself. Like, in fact, everyone that comes to the Love Sack store is like, I want to work here where you just sit on a Love Set beanbag all day. Yeah. But like, uh, it's a real job and it's a lot of work. And, and frankly, you know, I, I, I couldn't do it. Like, I, I'd, I'd rather do what I do. But um, for all of you who want to be influencers, it's not as easy as it looks. By the way, even just building an audience is damn near impossible. It's so hard. When you see how hard people work and like yeah. how they don't really grow their audience, yeah, it is hard. Instagram's made it really difficult. I think Instagram should have went the other way because it's an endorphin rush, right? right? People want to feel like empowered to want to post, and they should be able to get, reach their entire well, audience. And I feel like at the size it is, it's it's almost like a public service, a public utility. Yes. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, I don't know. That's why I have a hard time with the size Facebook's grown to and everything else. Like, where does it go? I don't know. I just so watered down. It's, it's even hard to navigate now. Yeah. Time for bed. Time for bed.